Making money with a t-shirt business alone is fairly hard. Whether you're struggling to make money with your t-shirt business or brand, or you're already making a decent profit with it, you wanna check out this video all the way to the end because I'm gonna show you how to make some more money. A lot of people say that the business is oversaturated. There's too many people selling custom t-shirts, too many brands that are starting up, nothing's original anymore, this, that, whatever it may be. There's a lot of people in the game. And to an extent, I agree. Anyone can go to the local Michaels or hobby store, they can check Amazon, they can check places like Heat Transfer Warehouse, and they can purchase a Cricut or Cameo for fairly cheap. You know, the prices of material are reasonable and the learning curve is not that big. But just because there's not a lot of money in it doesn't mean that there's no money in it. Everything I'm gonna cover in this video uses the equipment that you already have. And I'm also gonna cover a few things that really don't require any equipment. So let's start with the basic vinyl cutter. Let's say you just purchased a vinyl cutter and you're trying to make t-shirts and you're just not making money, there's not enough customers. You've gotten a couple sales here and there, but not a lot of people are just ordering t-shirts from you. What do you do? How do you make a couple of extra bucks? Well, it's fairly easy. You already have a vinyl cutter. So if you're only doing t-shirts, why not bring in vinyl decals? Or you can think beyond that and you can start to do cardboard cutouts. Cardboard cutouts are huge on places like Etsy for things like birthday parties, baby showers, bridal showers, engagement showers, pretty much anything that you can celebrate, you can make a cardboard cutout for. You can make cake toppers using some thick construction paper. They come out really nice and they're super easy to make. There's a bunch of different things that you can do with just a vinyl cutter. Like I said, you have vinyl decals, you have the cardboard cutouts, you can do things like glass etching. Now when you etch the glass, you don't etch directly onto the glass. What you can do in something like this is cut out a vinyl decal, layer it over glass, and in the empty spaces, you put something like Armor Etch. Armor Etch will burn the top layer of the glass and give it that nice etched look, and it comes out really nice. You can even cut your own HTV and sell that to other people that don't have cutters, but still want to make their own shirts. A cutter is super versatile and you can make a lot of money with it in a bunch of different ways. So always remember to try to think outside the box and think about different things that are able to be done with you know, the cutter that you already have. Always think outside the box because the possibilities are endless. Now let's say you're using sublimation for your t-shirt business or brand. If you're doing sublimation, you don't have to stick to just t-shirts because obviously sublimation is something that's super versatile. If you're only doing t-shirts with your sublimation printer, then you're missing out on a lot of money. Sublimation is probably one of the most versatile methods that there is to print practically anything. You got the obvious shirts, mugs, tumblers, puzzles, mouse pads, backpacks, alarm clocks. The possibilities are endless. Like almost anything that you can think of is able to be sublimated one way or another. So obviously you have all of those ways to do it, but you can also sell sublimation transfers. A sublimation transfer really takes sense to print and you can sell it for maybe a dollar or a dollar fifty. A lot of that depends on your market and the people that you're selling to, so just do your research when it comes to pricing. Now what about something like a DTG printer? Most DTG printers nowadays are able to print on a film that you can then powder up, bake, and make a DTF transfer. Now in my opinion, DTF transfers are a bit more of a process using a DTG printer, but there's always money to be made, especially in DTF transfers. Remember that one of the biggest issues that a lot of people have is printing full color on a regular cotton t-shirt and a lot of people don't like using inkjet transfer papers. So one of the best options that you have is DTF. So the DTF market is out there, it's open, and trust me, there's money in there. White toner printers. White toner printers have a ton of different uses. With a white toner printer, you can do transfers, and you can obviously do your regular t-shirts, but get this, there's also different specialty papers that you can use to print on hard surfaces. So you can print your design and you can make something like acrylic invitations. Or even then, since it's a white toner printer, what you can do is get black paper, stick it in the slot, and print out black invitations with white ink. Now let me tell you that that looks classy. It's supposed to be a teacup with your fancy pinky up. <laughs> there's a bunch of different uses for the white toner printer. Let me tell you that a lot of people do not print white. So just being able to print the color white, in my opinion, gives you a bit of an advantage. Now that's using the machines that you already have. So this part was just to give you an idea of ways to think outside of the box to be able to offer different products and different services. Now what about ways that don't include any of the actual machines? Well, you can teach people. You can do what I'm doing. You can go on YouTube, go on TikTok or Instagram and make tutorials. If you have knowledge and you're willing to share it, trust me, people are willing to listen. As long as you're honest, truthful, and don't wanna just sell things to people, then you can actually start to make some extra money off of videos. Now, I do understand that making money off of just TikTok and YouTube is actually extremely hard. Trust me, my YouTube channel is still not monetized after like two and a half years, but we're right there. So if you'd like to help in getting this channel monetized and helping me make a couple of extra bucks, then I would greatly appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. Every like, watch, share, or subscription really means a lot. It helps me grow the channel, it helps me grow professionally, and it's very much appreciated, and I do thank all of you. And also let me point out that TikTok, there's no money in the creator fund. That creator fund is pure garbage. 
I was literally making one or two cents daily. I think the most I made was when one of my hit videos hit, I think it was 10,000 views in one day, and I made 25 cents. Now YouTube is a different story. YouTube is a bit harder to actually get monetized, but there's a little bit more money in it. Also on a platform like YouTube, it is harder to get your videos in front of people because these videos mainly show up on your browsing or when you search for it. Unlike an app like TikTok or with Instagram Reels where they'll put your video in front of a bunch of random people and if it starts to perform, they'll share it with everybody else. Now that's one way to do it, but that can potentially take a long time. Another way that you can monetize your videos is by affiliate marketing. Now I know a lot of people talk about affiliate marketing, a lot of people don't like it, they say it's really hard, there's not a lot of money in it, but just because there's not a lot of money in it doesn't mean that there's no money in it. And quite frankly, there can be a lot of money in it depending on the type of work that you put into it and also depending on your audience. Now, if you notice in the descriptions of my videos or in my beacons page on my TikTok, you're gonna see a bunch of links to different products that I recommend, that I use, and that I promoted. Most of those, not all of them, are affiliate links. Now, in order to get those affiliate links, you need to apply to be an affiliate with certain places. A lot of companies have affiliate programs directly associated with the company, and others use a third-party program like ShareSale. I'll have ShareSale linked down below so that way you guys can all check it out. Basically what it is, it's a site where there's a bunch of different merchants and you're able to apply to become an affiliate to whatever merchant you want. Now, I'm not saying go and apply to every single merchant that's in there. I'm not gonna be recommending certain TVs if I'm trying to teach people how to make t-shirts. Be picky with the people that you affiliate yourself with because you want everything to fall in line with what you're doing. In my case, I'm affiliated with Heat Transfer Warehouse, HTV Ron, and a couple of different others. Heat Transfer Warehouse has their own affiliate network, whereas HTV Ron uses ShareSale. So once you apply to be an affiliate with X company and they approve you, you get your own links. Those links you can do like I do and you can put them down in the descriptions, you can put them in the link in your bio of your TikTok or Instagram. And whenever somebody clicks on that link, gets tracked and the commission is made by the person that referred the customer. Also, don't ever think that you're gonna pay more if you click on somebody's link. It doesn't work that way. The money pretty much comes out of the profit that the company is making. That goes to the affiliate. So the money is being taken out from the company's profit and given to the affiliate. It's pretty much a commission for bringing people in. Now with that being said, obviously, please make sure to check out the links in my descriptions. Whenever you click on those, it really means a lot to me and that really helps me out a lot. Now, alongside influencer marketing, you can reach out to different companies or even then companies can reach out to you and offer to pay you to make videos. Sometimes it could be just for one video or multiple. If you're putting out good information and actually bringing sales into certain companies, they can reach out to you and offer you some money so you can start promoting some of their other products. And not even necessarily promoting them. A lot of times it's giving an honest review on them. A lot of these companies are noticing that the traditional way of marketing is not working the way it used to. A lot of people nowadays are getting influenced, hence the term influencer, by people on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and seeing these live videos or recently made videos or whatever it is, video demonstrations of products being used and being honest about the product. You look at a commercial on TV, it's just glorifying the product no matter what it is, even if it's a piece of crap. You look at some videos on YouTube and TikTok and you're gonna get a more honest experience. Some people will tell you flat out, this product sucked. The same way that there's a lot of good companies out there that are working with affiliates and influencers to promote their products, there's a lot of bad companies and scams as well. Now I know if you're just starting out, it's gonna be kind of hard for you to notice these things, for you to notice which companies are legit, which ones are not. But before you accept any agreement, sign any contract or whatever it may be, research the company. Some companies can potentially pay an extra little bit of money to some people just so that way they can promote their products a bit more and just make them look better than what they really are. Now thankfully, I have not had a bad experience with any company that I've ever worked with. Every company that I've been or currently am affiliated with has always been really good to me and their customers. Now I know making money this way with videos as well as affiliate marketing is harder, but it's something that you can get started in the meantime and grow little by little. A lot of these things don't really happen overnight. A lot of this stuff takes time to build, videos take time to record, time to edit. It's, it's a process and especially with work that you're already doing, it can get time consuming, tiring, and believe me, I understand you can get very frustrated sometimes as well as unmotivated. For the past couple of weeks or maybe a month or two, I've been on that same boat. I've been thinking of different ways to try to make money. Ever since I quit my job, things have been <laughs> a lot different. But I said this in one of my TikToks before, to me it's not about getting a bunch of money in one place because if you lose that, you're screwed. It's about getting a little bit of money in a bunch of different places. So that way if one of those income streams decides to disappear for whatever reason, you still have everything else covering your butt. Another thing that you can do is offer something like Patreon. For those of you that don't know, Patreon is a website or an app where you can do exclusive content and people pay in different tiers or a flat monthly fee 
whatever it may be. And no, it's not to be confused with something like OF. <laughs> a lot of creators are actually on Patreon and they offer exclusive tutorials, exclusive discounts, one-on-one -on -one help, a bunch of different options that are usually fairly cheap. Most of the subscriptions that I've seen on Patreon for something like this industry, the apparel decoration business, they're usually between like $2 a month to anywhere between $20 or $25 a month. And that obviously varies in what the creator's offering. But you can always try Patreon. If you have a following of loyal viewers and you have something that you can offer them exclusively that you think is worth some money, then start a Patreon and take it from there, see how it goes. There you have it. There are a bunch of different ways that you can make money using what you already have or just your knowledge. Huge thank you to everyone for watching today. Please always make sure to subscribe and hit that like button if you found this video useful. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.